गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स द बिगेस्ट मिथ द इंग्लिश लिटरेचर स्टूडेंट्स हैव इज दैट इंग्लिश लिटरेचर इज ऑल अबाउट रीडिंग वर्क्स और मेमोराइजिंग द वर्क्स एंड द ऑथर्स मैनी स्टूडेंट्स नो एवरी थिंग अबाउट ऑल द ऑथर्स ऑल द वर्क्स फ्रॉम ब्रिटिश लिटरेचर और अमेरिकन लिटरेचर बट दे आर स्टिल अनेबल टू क्वालिफाई एनी कॉम्पिटिटिव एग्जाम जस्ट बिकॉज दे आर ऑलवेज इन टू मेमोराइजिंग द स्टफ रैदर दैन अंडरस्टैंडिंग द थिंग्स द ब्यूटिफुल थिंग अबाउट इंग्लिश लिटरेचर इज दैट इफ यू अंडरस्टैंड द थिंग्स इन एन ऑर्गेनाइज वे देन यू डोंट हैव टू रिमेंबर एनी थिंग इन योर फ्यूचर इंग्लिश लिटरेचर इट्स सेल्फ इज अ काइंड ऑफ अ स्टोरी दैट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर फ्रॉम द बिगिनिंग एंड देन यू हैव टू गो थ्रू ऑल दो स्टेजिज और ऑल दो पीरियड्स इन ऑर्डर टू अंडरस्टैंड वट इट इज ऑल अबाउट सो इन दिस वीडियो वी आर ओनली गोइंग टू डिस्कस why aristotle laid the principles of tragedy what were the reasons which stimulated him to write against plato or to write in the defense of poetry as many of you know what is catharsis hamartia or anagnosis or peripetia we are not going to discuss all these literary terms or the terms which is given by the aristotle in the elements of tragedy but we are only going to talk about what were the reasons which made aristotle I laid down these principles so before beginning this video if you are one of those students who believe in smart work rather than hard work then you can simply check out our study material on our website i have given the link in the description below and you can simply check out the study material that we provide to the english literature students and now without any further delay let's begin this video one of the foremost thing that you have to understand that the subjects like literary criticism theory or critical theory all these are interrelated some call it literary criticism some call it literary theory some call it critical theory so beginning of all this literary criticism literary theory or critical theory was started with the publication of republic which was written by plato so as you know plato did not want the artists like poets or painters to be the citizen of the ideal state it was only because painters and poets feed the emotions rather than cultivating an rational mind or a logical mind and for plato an ideal state cannot be run by poets or the one who can feed the emotions of the citizens it is always a rational and logical mind which can always establish an ideal state which can work under pressure which can work during the difficult situations people who are swayed by the emotions generally takes the decision under their emotions and that are mostly wrong so plato was not in favor of these poets and painters and that's why it became one of the reasons why plato banished everyone or every poet or artist from this work republic it was not like plato banished all the poets he did allow two types of poets number one the poets who can praise the god who can praise the glory of god who can sing the hymns for god and the one who can talk about the truth so he allowed two types of poets one was uh, the poet who can talk about the god the glory of god and another one was the one who can talk about philosophy or the truth or what is the higher truth that all the citizens must follow in order to become intellectually able to understand the difference between a reality and illusion what many of the students don't know that by the end of republic plato said I will allow all those poets I will allow all those artists in the state in the republic in an ideal state if you give me a logical reason why should I allow them he said I don't have any problem with the poets I don't have any problem with the painters or writers you simply tell me or you simply give a logical reason why should I allow them if you give me a logical or rational reason I will surely allow them in the ideal state so a few of these statements which plato made stimulated all the other upcoming generation critics and theorists till today we debate that poets are good for the state or poets are useless if he had not mentioned the statement that he would allow all the poets and painters into the republic if someone would give him a logical answer then all these literary critics or literary theorists would not have uh, made their own theories so the works like apology by philip sidney or you can say defense of poetry by pb shelley all these are the works which defends the poetry against the statement made by the plato and the first person who defended poetry was aristotle so in this video we are not going to talk about what aristotle had talked about poets but we are only going to discuss what are the important principles or why he laid these principles of tragedy So moving forward as many of you know that Aristotle has written a work Poetics 
where he mentioned about the poets and where he mentioned about the elements of tragedy that how a tragedy should be written. The main reason of Aristotle to come out with this work or you can say the lectures he delivered to his students was that he did not want the art of tragedy making should be lost somewhere. Actually what happened was uh, the Greek tragedies are one of the famous tragedies. They know the art of writing the tragedies. So Aristotle wanted to spread these tragedies to the next generation. As the famous dramatist Sophocles or Euripides was no more, they were dead and that's why Aristotle thought to create some guidelines, to create some principles so that the upcoming generation, so that the coming generation would follow these guidelines in order to create their own piece of work. Aristotle's guidelines or the principles of tragedies are still relatable to this period. So you can see uh, the modern age work T.S. Eliot's Murder in Cathedral used the tragic hero of Aristotle. Thomas Beckett is a tragic hero in this play Murder in Cathedral and this is taken from Aristotle's tragic hero or you can say the principles he laid down for the tragedy. Even after 2500 years, we are still following the Aristotle principles of tragedy. It was later in 1965 or you can say 1960s that Anton Chekhov came and made his own principles and innovated his own way of writing tragedies. But for many years, for many centuries, it was Aristotle's work which were or Aristotle's uh, principles of tragedy which was followed by all these writers. It was Aristotle who made a separate branch called poetics or you can say he made other subjects like biology, chemistry, physics, science, political theory and so on and so forth. He was the first person who organized everything in an organized way. So Aristotle did not want this art of tragedy go lost somewhere and that's why he used the example of uh, Oedipus. Oedipus which was written by Sophocles and laid down everything in an organized way. He talked about catharsis and homertia, anagnosis, peripetia, uh, taking an example from Sophocles, Oedipus. He took this work as a foundation to lay down his own uh, principles of tragedy and then he went on to describe what is the difference between plot and a story and why a plot is the main element in a tragedy and everything he laid down only because he wanted to share uh, this art of storytelling or this art of tragedy uh, telling or representing to the audience in an organized way and many of the dramatists are in depth to the principles laid down by Aristotle and that is the main reason why Aristotle laid down all these principles of tragedy in his work poetics so i hope you found the video worth your time if you're new to this channel then don't forget to subscribe the channel that's it for this video thank you